Wind can pack a lot of power. A wind turbine harnesses that power to generate electricity. Unfortunately, wind can't be turned into electricity in a single step. But wind can generate movement, and movement can generate electricity. The genius of the wind turbine is that it exploits both, using wind to create the movement of the blades, and the spinning blades to produce electricity. How does it work? Wind turbine blades are aerodynamically designed to catch the maximum amount of wind energy to make them rotate. Inside the turbine, an electromagnetic system transforms that rotational movement into electricity that's stored in a battery. The stronger the wind, the faster the blades rotate, the more power generated. Getting the blades moving is the first step. And to do that, of course, requires a strong, steady wind. The carbon fiber blades are aerodynamic to fully exploit wind power. One surface is rounded, the other relatively flat. Wind flowing over the rounded side speeds up and creates a low pressure pocket that sucks the blade sideways, what's known as lift. Now that lift has set the blades in motion, let's see how this rotation can be turned into wattage to power the fridge or stove. When the blades turn, they spin a shaft connected to a rotor inside a generator. Twelve small magnets fixed around the rotor turn inside a stator made of coils of copper wire. These magnets are an alloy of neodymium, iron, and boron. They're small but powerful. In fact, they're among the most powerful magnets on Earth. The turbine needs their incredible strength to turn the blade's rotational energy into electricity. When the magnets rotate inside the stator, they create a moving magnetic field. And the laws of electromagnetism dictate what follows. Electrons in the copper coil also start moving. The movement of these electrons produces what's called an alternating current, the kind that comes out of conventional wall outlets. Alternating current is easy to produce and distribute, but impossible to store in a battery. It needs to be transformed into a direct current in order to be contained. This electronic circuit inside the turbine does the job. With winds of 45 kilometers an hour, this particular turbine can produce 400 watts of power, enough to light up four 100-watt light bulbs. Doesn't seem like much, but the wattage can be boosted by accumulating and storing the energy in a battery. A charge controller monitors the battery. It stops the blades turning when the battery's full, and lets them turn again when the battery needs recharging, keeping the power level optimal. The stronger the wind, the more electricity the turbine can produce. But if the wind is too strong, the turbine can get damaged. So the turbine is equipped with a braking system that slows down the blades or brings them to a complete stop. This braking system also exploits the laws of electromagnetism. But this time, instead of the moving magnets inducing electricity in the coils, the electricity in the coils is used to stop the moving magnets. Basically, the trick is to create a short circuit in order to slow the rotor. This produces a counterforce in the magnetic field that acts as a brake, slowing down the spinning magnets. The electronic circuit in the turbine oversees this electromagnetic braking system, monitoring wind speed and the blade rotation. If wind speeds go over 56 kilometers an hour, the brake automatically slows the rotor down. And if the wind tops 80 kilometers an hour, the brake system gradually brings them to a complete halt. A flashing red light under the turbine warns of the extreme conditions. Every part of the turbine is made to exploit the wind's power. As long as the wind blows, the blades turn, and the generator uses their movement to make electricity. By performing a double energy conversion, the turbine can make electricity with nothing but wind. Wind becomes movement, movement becomes electricity, and this boring old windmill becomes a mini power station. Amazing. <laughs>